In this video tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to convert a line CAD drawing that has been virtually plotted as a PDF file and convert it to a presentation drawing using the live rendered tools in Adobe Illustrator. To start this lesson, you will need to download the partial kitchen plan that has already been plotted from CAD into a PDF, portable document format. Save this file to your computer hard drive or desktop. Once you have the Great Room PDF file saved, open the file in Adobe Illustrator. The PDF file will open in Adobe Illustrator, but here it is important for me to point out that the PDF file is not a native Adobe Illustrator working file. This means there will be limitations to the tools and commands you will be able to access in a PDF file. For example, you can see that a PDF file doesn't have access to the swatches panel. In order to rectify this, I will need to copy the data from this PDF file onto a new Adobe Illustrator file. Let's get started by creating a new Adobe Illustrator working file. Go to the File pull-down menu and select New. In this dialog box, I want the size of my document to be 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall. I will name this Rob Great Room Rendering. You should add your, your last name as part of the file instead of Rob. We only need one artboard. There will be no bleed, the color CMYK, and the raster effects will be 300 ppi. All of that should be the default. Now that we have a new artboard and a new Adobe Illustrator file, you can see that we have full access to the swatches panel. In addition to the swatches panel, we will have a full range of other commands. Just because we named the new file doesn't mean that it's saving anywhere. So what you just saw me do is save the file to my hard drive. That's an important step to do. Now from here, I'm going to copy this data from the PDF file using the white direct selection arrow. I will go to the object pull down menu and pick group to group the data. Then I'll go to the edit pull down menu and pick copy to copy the data. Hop back on to the new Adobe Illustrator working file and go to the Edit pull-down menu and select Paste in Place. And that will put the information in exactly the same place on the artboard as it was in the PDF file. Okay, from here we need to use the Object, Live Paint, Make order of operations. From this point forward, you will only be using the Live Paint Selector tool and the Live Paint Bucket to create the rendering effects on this drawing. Use the Live Paint Selection tool to pre-select an area. The selected area will have a temporary grade screen over it. This is helpful to us to see the area we will be working on. Once the area is selected, pick a swatch from the swatches panel. To deselect the gray screen, pick on any open area. To render with more interesting materials relevant to interior design, we will need to download images from the material library that I have provided to you in Canvas or you can use your own material images. Here you will see me preview a sampling of files to determine which images to utilize in my live rendering. When you've made your selections, download those into your computer's hard drive or desktop. Materials that are relevant to this project's objectives include at least two flooring samples, a material suitable for rendering a countertop, and fabrics for the soft area of the great room. One more detail that you may need to find is a rug sample. I'll show you a couple of different options for creating a rug within the live rendered drawing. 
Now that you've downloaded the material files, it is time to test them in the live rendering. The next steps will be to bring in one material at a time. Go to the File pull-down menu and choose Place. Select one file at a time. A thumbnail image will appear attached to wherever you position your mouse. If you pick and drag out the image, you can size the file approximately to the size of the drawing. You will also need to keep an eye on the material scale. If the material orientation is not the way you want it placed in your rendering, once you have it in the drawing, you can rotate the material sample by going to the Object pull-down menu to Transform Rotate. From the Rotate dialog box, select 90 degrees and OK. Next, adjust the image using the Selection tool, which is the black arrow on the main toolbar. Make the sample reflect how you think it should look. To be able to render with this image, you will need to make it into a swatch first. To do this, use the black arrow to drag the image into the swatches panel. Once you have a swatch made from the image, drag the placed file into the gray scratch area adjacent to the white artboard. Using the Live Selection tool, pre-select the floor area. The red outline alerts you to the boundaries of the Live Selection. The red outline is not part of the actual rendering, but rather part of the interactive process with the Live Render tools. Hover the Live Selection tool over the floor area, and when you see the red outline, pick inside of the highlighted area. A grayed screen will indicate the selected area. The gray screen is also part of the interactive live render process, and not a permanent part of the rendering. With the floor area selected, pick on the swatch you just created from the Swatches panel. Add to the flooring area by rendering the same material in the pantry. Let's take a hyperpause here to answer a review question. What if you wanted to show your client the same material, but with an orientation rotated 90 degrees? So how would you do this? What steps would you take first? What resources do you already have at your fingertips? Let's demonstrate. Remember the material image placed in the gray scratch area earlier? Using the Selection tool, which is the black arrow, pick on the image. To rotate the image, go to the Object pull-down menu, Transform, Rotate, 90 degrees. Drag the new material into the Swatches panel. Then using the Live Selection tool, reselect the area, and then pick the new swatch pattern. Pick off in an open area away from the drawing to deselect. As an interior designer, I have found the Live Render tools extremely helpful when helping a client to decide which way the flooring material should be installed. To recap what you saw in this video, 1. How to use a PDF file of a CAD drawing to be used in a live rendering in Adobe Illustrator. 2. How to copy the drawing from a PDF file onto a working AI file and artboard. 3. How to create a live rendered object. 4. An introduction to the live render selection tool and how it works with the swatches panel. 5. How to utilize an image file to create a custom swatch to be used in a live rendering. 6. How to rotate an image and create another swatch sample. And 7. Finally, an overview of why the live render tools are useful to the type of presentation drawings employed by interior designers. The next video will cover rendering appliances and furnishings using the Gradient Tool and more Live Render Tools.